I just pressed no like a d Nope. Did absolutely jack sh of nothing. This is gonna do anything. Okay, pull power cord. I'm not touching that because it's presumably gonna go into a graphical environment. Oh no, we had a kernel panic. Dang it. Okay guys, so it is the next day and I am back at it with this Q4OS project here. Now, I just turned on the computer again, the Compact Desk Pro EN, because I was convinced that it was going to work for some bizarre reason and it didn't actually try to boot into the graphical environment this time. Instead, it actually stopped at the TTY prompt, which is good because then I can actually at least log into it and try to see if I can get some updates or maybe I can get something to work. And sure enough, it boots and I had to look up this forum uh, post so I can get the default login because it obviously didn't set one up for me. So by default, for those who need to know this, the login by default is admin queue and it will just send you right to the uh, text prompt here. So that's good information to have for in the future. So I think for now, what we need to do, I'm gonna go back into the documentation so I can figure out what commands I need to run as far as getting the updates are concerned. So I'll have to see what's going on here because most of this is mentioning the graphical environment, but I think this is all just pseudo apt commands. So this might not be too bad because if it's based on Debian, which means that it's basically, if, as if I were trying to use Ubuntu only, slight differences so let me grab this ethernet cable plug it in and we'll try this again okay so there's not much i can really do at this camera angle but i'll try my best i'll even uh take the opportunity here to untwist the blinds from this network cable and uh close them real quick so it makes it a little easier to see the screen so let's just check make sure we actually have an ip address oh uh, i i have configs not on here yet really <laughs> well that's useful so then I guess what commands... No, I can't use question mark. Ah, dear God. I am a little rusty at my Linux, so forgive me. Um, is there any, like, special commands? I don't think so. So I think we could just hopefully do maybe a sudo apt update, maybe. If we're lucky. Okay, good. It does have internet access, so it is able to get out to the Debian repositories. So that's good. That's very good. That's what I like to see. I was surprised that there's no IF config. You'd think that'd be part of it, but maybe I don't have like the net tools installed that might not be included, which would make sense because you have to download that from the repositories. A lot of the Debian repositories are, uh, you know, obviously they hold all the software, but obviously to get this on a CD, they probably took a lot of stuff out. That and maybe because I have the low memory install that wasn't part of it, which would make sense. So... We'll wait for it to finish here. I'm sure there's a ton of updates. Debian 10 is frequently updated with a bunch of good stuff. So I don't know. That might just be something we'll do. My hard drive is definitely crunching away at the moment, so it's probably throwing in a lot of stuff from Swap. But I mean, we're at the text prompt, so it shouldn't be too bad. But I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, the hard drive's crunching again. Reading package lists. You guys can't really see that. All right, so as I thought, uh, we do have packages that need updates, so. Let's see if that's the, nope. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I'm rusty at my Linux. I really am. <laughs> we'll just go straight into the upgrade. I'll just take the assumption that Everything needs updates. So let's see, what do we got? Uh, looks like quite a bit, honestly. Uh, pff, lots of libraries need to be updated, looks like. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Looks like it has to download about 90 megabytes. So go for it. Do your thing. Uh, see how quick it'll actually download stuff here. Wonder what this network card can pull. It's actually not doing too bad. Performance is pretty decent, at least networking-wise. And, I mean, this is a 30 megabit per second connection, so it looks like, yeah, the network card's able to get up to speed. It's got 100 megabit per second connection, assuming that that's what this is. Yeah, look at that bandwidth. Not bad. 
So it looks like this old computer can still pull some bandwidth through. Pretty impressive stuff. All right, I'm going to get these updates installed, and I will be back once this reboots, or if I have to reboot, I have no idea. I'm probably going to reboot it anyway, because it looks like it's recompiled a Linux image there, so I'm going to just restart once this finishes. Well, unfortunately, it looks like, um, yeah, we might have to swap systems after all, because I just installed updates, let the system reboot, and unfortunately, now it seems like we're not even able to start the operating system, even in a basic form anymore, because... It's kernel panicking like it was last night. Although not to the same exact measure, but it's still kernel panicking, which is obviously not good. So, dang, that really sucks. It's going to load the initial RAM disk. Looks like it's going to start up, right? And then any second now, presumably. Let's see if it actually boots up here. Because it was looking like it was going to boot up previously. And then it was just giving me kernel panic after kernel panic after kernel panic. So I don't know what was going on. Well, maybe it'll start up now that I've got the camera on it. Wouldn't that just be the funniest thing? Yeah, sure as sh It looks like it's actually going to start up when I point the camera at the monitor. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? This is like begging me to actually try to like use this darn thing. I don't know. Well, yeah, I guess if it boots up and it gets Trinity to work, then I guess I'll be impressed. But I tried to start X earlier and it said, nope, not having it. So I don't know. We might get dropped back off here at this TTY prompt again. And that's looking like it's going to be true. Making some curious sounds out of the internal speaker. Even though I have external ones plugged in. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, um... I'll let it sit. I'll see if Trinity's able to launch, but otherwise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's playing garbly gook out of the internal speaker, so I don't know what it's doing. But I'll let it sit here. I'm going to go do a couple other things, and then I'm going to come back. I don't think the desktop manager is going to launch, though. Well, unfortunately, it looks like even if I wanted to try to get it to work, it won't work because according to the official trinity desktop instructions here for installation you need at least a pentium 3 processor and half a gig of ram to even start the desktop environment so yeah that's obviously not going to work and while yes i will give credit where credit is due for the sake of q4 os's developers or whoever's actually making this operating system and yes i am kind of cool or i am kind of cool well whatever um there's that stupid sound from the speaker again. Well, I am kind of glad that they do provide an operating system that seems to appear to work, uh, at least that if it's out-of-box configuration with the desktop environment it has currently offered, not happening. So it looks like we're going to have to go and pull out another computer, whether I like it or not, as much as I really want to get this thing to work. Um, yeah, that's just not happening, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's about... All we can really do with this machine this compact desk pro en so i am I'm thinking i'm gonna go grab my dell dimension xps t500 which has a pentium 3 500 megahertz with 512 megabytes of ram and then we'll see if we can try to get this trinity desktop environment to actually function so i don't know well, for the meantime i'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut it down through the control Alt delete method and I'm gonna go hook up that other computer. I'm gonna do the same automated installation and go from there at this point. All right, so I got the next install of Q4OS done pretty much. So we're gonna see about having better luck. I got the Dell Dimension XPS T500 out. So hopefully this works a little bit better. It's a Pentium 3 at 500 megahertz with 512 megabytes of RAM an ATI Rage 128 Pro graphics card. So hopefully we have a little bit better luck today. I see some gobbledygook on the top of the screen there. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, hello, we got a GUI. That's way better than the Pentium 2 did. <laughs> I got a mouse. All right, let me turn my speakers on. Maybe we might be able to actually hear something coming out of the speakers and actually like 
you know, connect them up to power and all that fun stuff. I was not actually so expecting this to work. <laughs> it's still booting. Oh, here we go. You may want to enlarge text and widget size to improve readability. Click OK to run the configuration tool. Okay. We'll probably leave the scaling factor at one, to be honest. Sound card not detected, system sound is disabled. Well, I didn't expect a Yamaha sound device to work. Yes, I want to keep the system language as English. This is sweet. I'm actually really surprised that it's actually working. All that sound stuff was for nothing though. Anyways. Please enter a new password for user admin Q. Sure, why not? Password is longer than eight characters. On some systems, this can cause problems. I just want to use as is, so you can duck off. Oh, here we go. All right. So, pick between three different options. I think we'll just do the full thing. Insufficient hardware detected. Your CPU lacks SSE2 support. SSE2 is necessary for required software. Well, obviously. Yeah, it looks like we can do the basic Q4 OS desktop, but nothing more given that I'm on a Pentium 3, not a Pentium 4. That's fair enough. Checking internet. Yep, looks like it's got a network connection. That's a good sign. Perfect. All right, well, it looks like it's got to download some stuff. So I will come back once this is done and we're at a desktop, I think, unless there's anything interesting along the way that's worth putting on camera because it looks like it's just downloading updates and packages. So, yeah. All right, it's quite a while later, and it looks like everything has been installed, which is good because it took absolutely ages, of course. So we got a finish button. I think it's going to reboot. That would be a good likely prediction. Congratulations, setup is finished. Well, I would hope that it finished. I waited long enough. Let's see what happens here. I'm not sure if I hear the hard drive clunking or what. Probably is. I mean, if I had to take a guess, that's probably what it is. Oh, it's actually loading the uh, desktop environment. Now, you notice it looks very similar to that of old KDE3. The desktop environment that this is is heavily based off of the old KDE3 code, I believe, or... It tries to replicate the look and feel of the old KDE, which is good because it actually means lightweight system resource usage, which means it can actually run on hardware as old as this. So that would make sense. And here we are. It looks like we actually made it. And funnily enough, just taking a notice of the desktop icons here, my documents, my computer, my network places, yeah, that awfully resembles Windows. <laughs> Well, resembles that of Windows awfully closely, I meant to say. Not awfully resembles Windows, because it resembles Windows. It obviously has the same desktop uh, icon names, but you get what I'm trying to say. Welcome to Q4OS, fast and powerful desktop operating system focused on long-term stability, reliability, and classic-style user interface. And, yeah, that's based off Debian 10. Okay, so looks like we have quite a bit of stuff here that we can uh, take a look at here. So... I wonder what, um, hmm. we already ran the desktop profiler. That's how we were able to get into the desktop environment in the first place. Uh, install applications, install proprietary codecs, turn on desktop effects, which we're not gonna do on this hardware because it's pretty doggone old. Set auto login, interest, I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, hmm. Well, this doesn't have a DVD drive, so I don't think we really have to worry about that, but, um, you can take a look at some of this stuff here. So it looks like it has its own little setups for everything, which is kind of nice, I suppose. I wonder what this menu looks like. Yeah, here we go. This is exactly what I was thinking it was going to be like. As you notice, it looks like Windows XP start menu here. And you get your applications menu, programs, stuff like that. Very interesting. And as you notice, it actually looks like the Windows setup wizard. 
Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, that looks so trippy. I've never seen Linux actually do this. But somebody's gone through the effort of actually trying to make it look like it's a Windows setup wizard. Very interesting. Almost makes me wonder what the right-click menu on the desktop has. It looks like it's just from KDE. Nothing fancy here other than the logout, lock session, switch user options, which I think were also inside of KDE, if I'm not mistaken. But otherwise, this whole menu looks very much like the KDE 3 right-click menu on the desktop anyway. In fact, even the settings panel, yep, it's pulled straight from KDE 3, which again, that makes sense because this is what this is. So we have a flat colored wallpaper out of the box. What other backgrounds do we have included? All right, that's a KDE wallpaper. I'm not surprised. It looks like there's some other ones in here that aren't from KDE. This must be unique to Q4OS. What's this curls on green look like? Granted, I know the monitor's in the wrong resolution, so it's not helping, but you know how it is. Um, it should scale and crop. Yep, there we go. Yeah. Well, that actually kind of looks pretty cool, honestly. Um, I'm holding the camera with one hand and trying to do stuff with the other, so it doesn't exactly help matters any. But yeah, it looks like it's doing its thing, so that's good. Do we have like a... Um, we have like a task manager of some kind on here if I go under programs what is it accessories um what if it's under like system I think maybe uh, yeah definitely the animations are a bit glitchy but it works I think it's the performance monitor if I'm not mistaken obviously as you can see the animations for that cursor which uh, KDE would normally use are turned off interestingly enough Looks like that's on top of everything else. Hmm. There we go. Now you can take a look at our memory usage, which as you can see, our memory usage is awfully high from the looks of it, given that it mentions that it's only got like five, six megs free, which is interesting that it says that. I wonder if what the operating system is doing is it's taking most commonly used things and it's caching them in the RAM to reduce the disk usage, hence why it looks like the physical memory usage is a lot lower than it actually is, but that's just because it looks like it's actually taking what it would need and caching it in the RAM so it's more, uh, so it has more performance, but I don't know, I could be wrong. It might have just been that setup wizard there. Oh, looks like it refreshed everything. Installation successfully completed with a smiley face, so I guess that's nice. Yep, <laughs> we got to finish the setup wizard. What an interesting setup process, if I'm going to be honest. That's pretty weird. So, yeah, there is the desktop environment. I wonder what else we can do as far as what's installed by default. What does it come with as far as games go? Probably nothing, yeah. No, no games are included, but I didn't expect there to be. So what all lies under the accessories folder? Uh, or Yeah, accessories folder. So we have Conquer for a web browser. We have a tab document viewer. Uh, we have our wallet management tool program, apparently. Uh, system had a lot of things in it. So super user. You have a file manager in super user mode, terminal in super user mode, and then the file manager, some other file manager anyway, in super user mode. Okay, interesting, I see. So there's two different file uh, manager programs. It, I know that Conquer acts as one, but Crusader must be the one that this comes with. And then it looks like it's just got all these other things such as your screen resize and rotate. Let's see what kind of resolution options we have. I know that this graphics card doesn't exactly have a whole host of widescreen resolution support, but Hopefully it'll at least let me fix the resolution if it does have one, I'm not too sure. It just popped up down there. Okay, yeah, it doesn't look like we have a whole host of options. But we'll go 1024 by 768 here to reduce the load on the GPU because it doesn't look like it has a proper frame buffer driver installed, which doesn't surprise me given the age of the GPU. But at least it'll have less to draw on the screen by lowering the resolution. Yeah, it's already much faster. So we have a software center in here, which is interesting that it'd be underneath the system thing, but it's Linux. 
What's on the desktop? Okay, so we have a scientific calculator. It's K-Calc. All right, looks pretty decent, I would say. Well, this was in that folder. We got a clipboard tool, a desktop pager for multiple desktops, I would assume. And then we got K-Write. Surprised that uh, Kate isn't the default text editor, given that this is KDE derived. But what do I know, right? Why don't you say we go open back up the performance monitor here real quick, because I wanted to have that open in the background while we open some software here. Actually, you know what? Let's try opening up this Q4OS software center. I want to see what is actually included. Okay, so we have a few different options here. So Synaptic Package Manager, Chromium, Firefox, LibreOffice, VLC, uh, Thunderbird, Gparted, Wine. We even have an option for VirtualBox editions. I'm surprised that's in there. Don't know why that is in there, but sure, why not? Um, let's see if we can try installing Firefox. How do we do that? Do we just click Install Application? Looks like it. So it's downloading Mozilla Firefox. I can't imagine that it's going to download a modern version of it because the Pentium 3 that's in here is limited to SSE and not SSE 2. So my guess is that it's going to have to either it'll somehow emulate the required instruction sets or I'll, I assume that it's going to do this. It's going to have to download an older version. I think version specifically, I think it'd be 48.0.2 was the last one that would run on a Pentium 3. I don't know. <laughs> I know that the Pentium 4 is still supported as a, as a minimum to run modern web browsers, which would make sense because uh, Pentium 4s in the Prescott and Cedar Mill generations, as far as socket 775 goes, could actually still do that. But, you know, you know. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the camera here and let this install. Hmm. Well, it says it's completed. Oh, whoops, I must have clicked it twice. Yeah, I don't think we need to install twice. I think we're good. Okay, I need to do an auto on the monitor because it's off center and it's driving me nuts. There we go, that's better. So we have Firefox on the desktop. Now what's interesting is I noticed that it was installing version 73.0.1. I don't think that's gonna work. Just, I have the, <laughs> I have the feeling it's not gonna work. This is a Pentium 3. It's not supposed to run anything that new. But I mean, what do I know, right? <laughs> what do I know? But um, let me come over here. Let me see if it's actually doing something. Yeah, as I thought, uh, it did do a jack crap. Because again, no SSE2. Not surprised to say the least. <sighs> Sorry about the network cable still being in the way. There's nothing I can really do about that. Hmm. Interesting. I guess I'll take a look at some of these other windows, like my computer. I can take a look and see what that looks like here, which is opening up Conqueror. Oh, wow. They actually made the file browser look like Internet Explorer 6. <laughs> wow, that takes some effort. That really does take some effort. What version of Trinity is this? It was born as a fork of the K-Desktop environment version 3.5, which was originally written by KDE Team. Blah, 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 blah. Cool. And then, of course, Conqueror is version R14.0.6. Copyright 2014. Hmm. Interesting. I guess uh, let's try to browse the web with Conqueror. In this case, ConquerNet Explorer 6. I can't think of a better way to put it. Thank you for using Conquer Web Browser. Conquer is a minimalist and very fast browser for users who need lightweight internet access. If you want to get the best experience and latest internet technologies, we recommend you to install Chromium Browser. Oh, this has got some good English. <laughs> you know, I don't have a good feeling about installing Chrome because I think Chrome also requires SSE too, if I'm not mistaken. But you know what? I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll see if it lets us do anything. But in the meantime... Um didn't obviously load their own website so that's a good sign <laughs> uh get out of here i'll stall you in a second can we go to google uh, 
step with one hand here. Okay, yeah, sure enough, yeah, it does it does load. All right. So, hmm. Can we load... Ah, this mouse sucks. Can we load YouTube? Nope, cannot connect to host. Why can it not load that? I'm surprised. Or is it because this web browser just sucks that much? Because I know how Conquer can be. Um, can we go to, like, the website for Google Drive? No, couldn't connect to the host. Yeah, and the, and the clock is set to April 2020. Is it because the... I know Linux likes to figure out with the clock, so it's not always correct. Maybe see just date and time here. I mean, so far, what I will say is that the OS feels more responsive than I was expecting it to be. That's not really saying too much, though, but it seems to operate. It seems to open stuff. So, so for Pentium 3 at 500 megahertz, it's not bad. And sure enough, yeah, it's set the time zone to UTC, so no wonder nothing is working. Can I switch the time zone to something else? Or New York. I could technically do that, but now I'm not interested in that. So do we have, like, like Seattle or Los Angeles? I know Linux likes to do Los Angeles. Can I select that? Yep, there we are. I want to set that as my region, so that should fix the clock. Yep, there we go. It's, yeah, it's 825. Yep, it's 825 on my watch, so there we go. I don't know if that's going to fix this stuff that we're dealing with here. No, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't connect. Well, um, what other websites can we try to load? Let's try Bing. Because I can't think of any other ones at the moment. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, that, that's good. So, obviously, um, Conquer is not usable, which does not surprise me. So, okay, sure, why not? Let's try installing Chrome. Package system is busy, not ready to install now. Setup cannot continue. The lock is caused very probably by ongoing background system updates. I don't think so. I don't recall there ever being any system updates being installed. Not to my knowledge, anyway. Huh. Anyways. Well, that was fun trying to browse the web. Let's try to go into the control panel, or control panel, in quote marks. See what it looks like here. Okay. Right. So it's very simplistic uh, control panel here. So we have sound and multimedia, which I, they said the sound wasn't working. I wonder if that's still true because this computer's got a bizarre Yamaha integrated sound solution. Linux probably doesn't care to like that thing too much. Um, so you got the familiar system notifications thing here. I guess we'll see if that loads something. Yeah, sure enough, it does. Yeah, it looks like it even uses the older style of startup and shutdown sounds. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, nothing's coming out of the sound. Darn. I was hoping to listen to that because I wanted to hear what it sounded like, but let's go into the sound system properties here. Let's see if we can do anything. It says that it was disabled. Why was that? I have no idea. Okay. If I press apply, what will happen? Okay, it didn't give me an error message. All right. Uh, let's try it again then. I don't know. <laughs> Did it actually turn on the sound? No, it doesn't look like it actually did anything. Dang. I wonder what the deal is. Like, why does it... Um... Let's try it again. Yeah, no, it didn't, didn't do it anything. That sucks. Um, I mean, I have another PCI sound card I could try, but like, I don't know if it's worth to putting into this computer. <laughs> at least at the moment, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it'll work better than the integrated sound. That's probably true. But uh, anyways, so let's see if we can actually, um... all right, I remembered. I borrowed the network cable from my server. So I can't exactly connect to the server when it's not on the network. So that idea is off the table. I'm sure that it works just fine. This is Debian 10, so it should have modern uh, SMB support built into it. I don't see any reason why that would be the case. There's a section for new applications. Um, oh yeah, Firefox. But again, that doesn't really work because I don't have SSE2 support. So what do I think of Q4 OS, or at least regarding 
Q4 OS on a Pentium 3. Eh, is my best way to put it. It runs, there's no doubt about it, it's a modern version of Debian Linux running on a Pentium 3. It has a supported-ish desktop environment, a rather old-looking one, but that's for the intent of performance, so I can't say I fault it. It does have the ability to uh, work, I guess, with older hardware in this regard, so credit where it's due. It looks like Windows, so it's very familiar-looking, at least in this version of the operating system. It looks very much like Windows, but honestly, you know, I'm, I'm not too sure about running modern Linux on a Pentium 3. And the biggest thing is, again, the instruction sets. The Pentium 3 doesn't support SSC2. So you're heavily limited on the amount of software you can run, particularly like I mentioned or shown too, web browsers. So modern Firefox won't work. Uh, Chrome won't work, the modern versions. You know, as much as you can sit here and install these pretty wallpapers and everything, which is cool and all, and I respect the development, and it's really impressive that you're able to get an operating system which can be updated to whatever is the latest for 2020 for 32-bit Debian 10. So I'll give them credit where it's due, but like I think you're just kind of beating a dead horse with this one, personally. And then, of course, regarding their minimum requirements on their website, that's kind of a bit ass, if I'm going to be honest. Like cool that you're able to get this to work on a 300 megahertz CPU with 128 megs of RAM, but as you saw, like, I had a Pentium 2 with 128 megs of RAM, you know, a 350 megahertz CPU, so I don't know what 350, me or rather, 300 megahertz CPU they were talking about, but very obviously, whatever I had didn't work, and I'm probably going to blame it on the graphics card, because it was some old ATI card that Linux probably no longer supports, even for a basic frame buffer in the case of that computer. So in this regard, at least I was able to get it to work with a basic frame buffer driver, and at least it actually seems to do something. But eh, it's not it's not great, if I'm going to be honest. So I don't know. I'll have to test with other hardware with the 64-bit version to really get a conclusive opinion on Q4 OS and its performance. And I might also have to try it with the modern Plasma environment I might test in a VM before I actually bust, uh, bust out a computer for that. Uh, maybe I'll try this Trinity version on, say, my netbook. We can try it on there and see if it works any better, because that supports 64-bit, and it has four times the RAM of this Pentium 3 computer. So that's certainly something we could try. But I don't know. For this video, it just... I don't know. It seems like the computer's really not... It's really not supposed to be running this, if I'm going to be honest. It's cool that it can, but I'm not convinced that's really good for it. I don't know what I'm trying to get at here, but you get my idea. Like it's it's not really it's not really all that great, but it's impressive nonetheless. That much I will definitely say. So with this having been said, uh, I know that this video really wasn't all too fantastic. It was mostly just me complaining at Linux and me being a noob at it. So my apologies. Maybe somebody found it funny. But if you liked the video in the end anyway, regardless of the disappointment that it kind of ended up being in the end, give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it if you did. Of course, the other button works as well if you didn't like this video. And if you want to see more content just like this one or perhaps even more entertaining content than this video, there's a button down below labeled subscribe. It's bright red. You should probably click on it. It would be great if you did. And, of course, background noise of my heater. That's always a thumbs up worthy thing, right? Right? Okay, I'm just kidding. It's a heater. Nobody hates, or nobody hates, nobody loves background noise. But anyways, uh, jumbling my words because I'm tired. So I guess with this having been said, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and I will come back to it another day. So thank you all once again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.